Did you commit to another CPA review course that just isn't aligned with how you learn? Well, spilled milk, baby. In the world of accounting, only one figure matters, and that's the bottom line. So by investing in universal CPA review, you're investing in yourself, and we promise to do everything in our power to get you the ROI that you're looking for by obtaining your CPA license. We know that purchasing a CPA review course is an investment, and we also know that spending all that money on a program that hasn't worked out sucks, and we want to soften that blow. Our Spilled Milk program will allow you to commit to Universal's Visual Learning CPA Review program at a steep discount. So reach out to info at universalcpareview.com to learn more about our program and what discounts you qualify for. Okay, so scenario number one, the non-monetary exchange transaction has commercial substance. So as we said, this means that there's going to be an impact to the change in cash flows from this transaction. So when a non-monetary exchange transaction has commercial substance, how we account for this is going to be more straightforward than had we lacked commercial substance. Okay, so in the event that it lacks commercial substance, we're going to have to dig deep into our souls, look at ourselves in the mirror, and tell ourselves that we are smart and capable individuals. And we know how to do this, okay, because this is when things get a little bit more uh, turbulent. But let's learn how to walk before we learn how to run, okay? So let's start with the easier situation. And that is when the non-monetary exchange transaction has commercial substance. Okay, so let's assume that Prospect Future and Nikki exchange a couple of trucks that has commercial substance. So we have two primary questions that we need to be able to address. We need to know how to calculate the gain or the loss, as well as the basis in the asset received. Okay, so easier approach if it has commercial substance for both of these calculations. So calculation number one, we're going to remember out with the old. So out with the old when determining the gain or the loss. And the reason we're going to remember that is because we're focused on the old asset. In other words, the asset that Prospect Future is giving up. So calculating the gain or the loss will be calculated if the exchange has commercial substance by taking the fair value of the old asset given and reducing it by the book value of that same asset that is given up. So this gain or loss is calculated as the difference between the fair value and the book value of the old asset. Right, remember, out with the old. And something to keep in mind is if the exchange has commercial substance, gains and losses will be recognized in their entirety. Technically, this is determining our realized gain, but because we're recognizing this in its entirety, this is still the calculation for determining the recognized gain. Okay, so when determining our basis, right, the second calculation, we're going to remember the phrase, having substance is fair. Okay, so we're going to assume that the fair value of the total assets given up will equal the fair value of the assets coming in. So when determining the basis, we're still focused on the asset given up, but we are applying the fair value approach. Okay, so we could simply apply the fair value approach, meaning we can assume that the fair value of the assets given up are equal to the fair value of the assets received. Right, the assets that are exchanged don't necessarily have to have an equal fair value, so it can also include cash given or cash received within the exchange as well. So this is going to be very commonly referred to as boot. So when we calculate the basis, again, we're applying the fair value approach. Okay, so again, applying the fair value approach, and we're remembering having substance is fair. When we see having substance, we're thinking has commercial substance. And when we see fair, we're thinking fair value approach. And again, we're still focused on the asset that is being exchanged, right? This is the asset that's given up. So we're going to take the fair value of the asset given up, and we're going to add this by any cash that is paid and reduce it by any cash that is received. Okay, so if boot is involved, it's almost going to always be one or the other. Cash paid or cash received. Boot paid or boot received. Okay, but what I really want to zero in on is the fact that the asset will be the asset given up, but it will be the fair value of the asset given up. Okay, so recapping this two-step mental map for non-monetary exchange transactions that have commercial substance, something super important to note is that regardless of the scenario, right, regardless of whether this has commercial substance or lacks commercial substance, we're focused on the asset that is given up. Okay, so step one is calculating the gain or the loss, which we're going to remember out with the old. Okay, so we said that the gain or the loss will be recognized in its entirety. All right, but something to keep in mind is that if we have a loss and the transaction lacks commercial substance, 
in which case the basis is actually not going to apply the fair value approach. All right, I know that's a lot to take in right now, but we're actually going to circle back to this scenario towards the end of this lecture, and this is all going to come full circle when we go through a few examples. Okay, so non-monetary exchange that has commercial substance. On January 1st, year one, Prospect Future traded a tow truck and paid $10,000 in cash for a building owned by Nikki Inc. The tow truck had an original cost of $50,000, accumulated depreciation of $30,000, and an estimated fair value of $30,000. Okay, so we see here that the transaction had commercial substance. A little red flag always needs to go off in your brain when you see has commercial substance. So we want to record the non-monetary exchange transaction. Okay, so we first need to determine step one, which is calculating the gain or the loss. So we're thinking out with the old. So we're thinking about the old asset that is given up. So Prospect Future gave up that asset that has a fair value of $30,000 and a book value of $20,000. Where did I get $20,000? Well, it had an original cost of $50,000 and had accumulated depreciation of $30,000. Okay, so $20,000 is the carrying value or the book value. So that gives them a realized gain of $10,000. So the question becomes, of this $10,000, how much is getting recognized today? Well, we remember if it has commercial substance, the entire gain is getting recognized today. Okay, so $10,000 is getting recognized today. Okay, so now moving on into step two, which is determining the basis of the asset received. So when we have a realized gain in a non-monetary exchange transaction that has commercial substance, we are remembering having substance is fair. So what does that mean? It means if it has commercial substance, we're focused on the word fair, meaning fair value. So the fair value of the asset given up is where we're starting when calculating basis. Okay, so this is going to be plus any cash paid minus any cash received. Okay, so we know that $10,000 was also paid. So the basis now becomes $30,000 plus $10,000 or $40,000. Okay, so now running through this journal entry, I always start with the basis or the book value of the asset that is on our books. Okay, so the $40,000 that we calculated in step two. Okay, but something's coming off our books. So what's coming off our books? Well, we got rid of this truck, right? We exchanged the truck for $50,000, right? That was the original cost. It also had this accumulated depreciation of $30,000. So that's also coming off our books. So the truck is sitting on our books as a normal debit balance in the amount of $50,000, right? That's the original cost. But it also has this accumulated depreciation, right? Anytime there's a depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation is also going to go up by crediting this account. But now that the truck is coming off our books, we're reversing out that accumulated depreciation by debiting it. Okay, so the truck is getting credited for the original cost of $50,000, and accumulated depreciation is getting reversed by debiting it. Okay, so the accumulated depreciation amount is $30,000. Okay, so now how about the gain that is recognized? Well, the gain that's recognized is $10,000, right? The entire amount is getting recognized. Gains will always get credited. If, on the other hand, this was a loss, the loss would have been debited. Okay, so we have this gain on the disposal for $10,000, and now we have the $10,000 discrepancy. All right, but we remember that cash paid is lumped into the debit that we recorded for this truck. Okay, so we still need to record cash going out the door. All right, this is a balance that is getting reduced, so we need to credit cash for $10,000.